involved in the independent struggle would have been a journalist or a lawyer or both. I mean, there'll be very few exceptions. So journalism had a different mission, a different vision then. Uh, Post-independence, when we fast forward and you come to 1990s, you know, in the context of liberalization and globalization and so on, I think this objective of journalism uh, in the public interest uh, shifts, as you can see, with the page three phenomenon and so on, to public, what is public interest shift to what interests the public? There's a difference between the two. The public interest is not necessarily what interests the public on a blow by blow, minute by minute, second by second basis, you know, especially with the arrival of social media and digital platforms, because putting a news, you know, paper to bed is, is a print uh, old kind of, now you, now you have it instant kind of updates coming up. So the, 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 the whole, there's been a paradigm shift in terms of both the production of news and the consumption of news. You also have, along with that, with the social media coming in, you have the idea of a, a prosumer, as they call it. So somebody who's also the producer and the consumer of news. Social media has people who produce the news. I know that news organizations now have to monitor the social media because what goes viral in the social media often could become your headline the next morning. Uh, so where do so where do where do the newspapers or the news agencies or the purveyors of news get their news is a, is an interesting point, uh, and the business model has collapsed. As we know, print has been suffering because of television earlier. Revenue shifted to television. Now television has plateaued and it's gone to digital media. But it's so widespread and spread thin that even digital media are not making. Nobody seems to be making money. And uh, newspapers are now resorting to events. Uh, you know, everything except what, what is in the columns in the newspaper, they're, they're resorting to extra kind of news, uh, you know, locations and uh, uh, initiatives and uh, exhibitions to, 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 to supplement. In fact, that becomes a big, big part of their, uh, uh, you know, earning. So the, the news model, there's a revenue, there's a revenue model crisis across the news media. But there's also the crisis of what is news? You know, uh, somebody talked about, yes, you're not even giving news. In the social media sphere, you have influencers, as she, as she hinted. Now, influencers are, I mean, each of them have lakhs and lakhs of viewers, you know, or, or consumers, because it's all on the smartphone. Uh, or, and what do they write about? What do they talk about? I find it, it has nothing to do with me. But then there are lakhs of people who are interested in that. So, that's interesting the public. So, is there a clear-cut difference between the public interest and what interests the public? Is, is one of the questions that we have to ask ourselves. Uh, I also find, you know, as a, running a journalism school now for 25 years, almost 25 years, it's not just that they are not reading newspapers, of course they're using smartphones, they have, I think there's breadth of information, there's no depth of information, there's vast breadth of information, but there's also the kind of information they're interested, we, we assume, ipso facto when we're journalists, that political news is the most important. Not necessarily so for the new generation of young, you know, millennial generation. They are interested in cuisine, they are interested in travel, they are interested in, you know, the music, they are interested in yoga, they are interested in lifestyle, they are interested in so many, you know, they are interested in veterinary you know, journalism, they are interested in cats, they are interested in dogs, and they, get, they follow that. And algorithms and pick that up and feed that appetite. So if I am interested in a cat, I only get, get, you know, get messages pushed to me which are about cats. And I, very soon I'll have cats growing out of my ears, you know, it becomes a kind of uh, self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, these filter bubbles are operating in the entire media scenario. And so there's a huge fragmentation, although we don't understand it. In the old days, when in, in, in a newspaper newsroom, if an editor said, we have missed the news, what does he or she mean? It's not that there are so many things happening in the world that are con we would consider as important, but there are 100 million things happening in the world. How do 5, 10, 15, 20 items become the agenda of a news? newspaper universally acceptable. One reason is, if you, when I say I miss the news as an editor, what I mean is my newspaper or my television channel did not carry what someone, else, another newspaper or another newspaper uh, television channel carried. So what is the implication for this for the journalist? If we should not miss the news, we should do what the other is doing. And therefore you get more and more of the same. This agenda setting of news is not a conscious activity. It happens because of this process of, uh, uh, so in one sense, I think social media has been a disruptive force and I think a welcome disruptive force. We have to rethink, we have to reimagine, we have to reinvent the idea of news. Uh, because it has to be relevant to, to the people we are speaking about. It must have a transformative impact. It must make a difference to their lives. It must give them meaning. It must give them context to their lives. Are we as journalists doing that is a big question. 
So calling a spade a spade is certainly part of journalism. You know, Telegraph will do it very, very uh, strongly, very acutely. I mean, uh, Rajagopal's headlines in Telegraph were, uh, I mean, heights of innovation. And sometimes I, I'd wonder how the man is free after writing that, you know, having publishing the paper the next day. <laughs> I expect to be picked up, but he's, he survived all that. Because he's very bold. But calling a spade a spade is important. Uh, more, I think news, getting fresh news is because difficult because of the way it works. But how do you define something? You don't call a spade a spoon. You don't call a spade a shovel. You know, there you are, I think, departing. You're, 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 how you describe something? Because you're supposed to describe to your viewers, to your readers, something that you are witness to or you have resources to find or you have the wherewithal to know more about. So these are the functions of, I think, the, the key functions of cardinal principles and core values of journalism today, in my opinion. That journalists are not able to fulfill or they are not in a transition phase where they are not able to put. But this prejudice and, the, see, uh, one, 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 just one point and then stop. I thought that we were an inferior uh, news uh, society, you know, because oh, this chilling effect, we, we are prejudiced about certain things, we have taboos, we don't talk about this or that. But with Gaza, Israel's attack on Gaza, that myth was busted in my mind. You find the entire Western media is complicit in the killing of men, women and children in Gaza. Why? Because they are not reporting it. You know about how, how these people are dying because the people who are being killed are sending us the videos before they die. I mean, that's, that's a primary social media news. And much as, say, um, the, 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 your uh, Guardian or your New York Times or your Washington Post may try to uh, you know, shove it under the carpet or put a euphemistic kind of uh, blanket on it, because there's Al Jazeera, you're able to see another picture, you know. But that doesn't mean Al Jazeera is the champion of journalism. When it comes to the Gulf Kuwaiti sheikhs, Al Jazeera will be mum, because Qatari sheikh runs the newspaper. But at least you, on, on this issue, you can, you can believe Al Jazeera. Can you believe Al Jazeera on Russia and Ukraine? I don't know. But can you believe it on Syria? I don't know. So there is no newspaper which gives you an omnibus kind of view. Editorial stances change depending on, on, on the evolving situation, depending on, depending on the target audience, and depending on how much pressure is implicitly or explicitly there on you. In, in, in the Indian context currently, of course, by the government at the center. And increasingly, states are trying to now uh, imitate that. That's very worrisome. Including in this state, there was at one time talk about trying to uh, you know, amend the police act. Uh, in, in, in Tamil in Tamil Nadu, uh, I heard the chief minister speak the other day about having a fact-finding, you know, fact-checking uh, organ organization within the state government. You know, following the cue of what the central government is doing, asking DAVP or PIB to also be a fact-checker on news, which means the government, a set of bureaucrats, are going to sit and say whether this news is factual or not, which is only a, a difference in degree from what was happening in the emergency. So this is the this is a kind of complicated environment I think we are going through. Yes, sir. Uh,